G'day. Peter Hardy Atkins here once again to talk about Wokira QRX 350 and today as promised we're talking about FPV. Here it is, camera on the front, transmitter on the underneath and Peter has been flying FPV and enjoying it. Now that is quite a breakthrough because I've made many attempts at flying FPV with standard quadcopters, no GPS, no OSD, etc, 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 and I found it all very stressful. The moment I got behind the screen, the pressures mounted horribly, and I found myself arguing with the instructor. It's great to have moved past that. And in a little while, I'll be telling you how you can find the shallow end of the pool for FPV and how you can go from the shallow end to the deep end painlessly. No crashes, no wrecked bits, etc, etc. You believe me? Well, it's really up to you. But let me start by showing you what it was that got me hooked on the idea of flying FPV. <laughs> Wasn't that fabulous? I was hooked instantly. That was he flying his mini Blackout H through a little bit of bush that's quite close to home, and it's amazing. It's, it's done with no assistance of really any sort technically. He's just flying a tiny little quad, a mini Blackout H, and it's hotter than a Hornet, and he's got razor sharp reflexes, and he makes it look easy. And let me tell you, it isn't. I tried that way, free rain doesn't work for me yet, but it's gonna. I've discovered the Walkira GPS and it makes a big difference. And the system I've come up with, it's a sort of a trainer wheels approach, which is going to take you from the shallow end of the pool to the deep end with very few accidents. And I call it hoverlock cruising. Let me explain that to you down at the field. I want you to assume that the aircraft has got to four meters above the ground and it's in hoverlock and I bring it round with your control it holds its altitude it's now facing towards its first destination I put the nose down a little which releases the coordinates so it's no longer locked to the map I fly forward in this case the plan will be for 25 meters I ease the forward stick the nose goes high it loses height a bit, it comes back to the point where I engaged, released the elevator and here we are on hoverlock at position one. If I bring it round with your nose down to release the coordinates, forward we go 25 meters, ease the pitch control off, the nose goes up, it slides backwards and down, finds the new coordinate spot, rises again and it's ready for me to step out from behind the screen and land at line of sight. All make sense? Okay, so that's the theory of it at the field. Let's try it now as I tried it on my first outing on a park that was too small, just across the road from my home, on a day when the wind was too strong, well the wind is always pretty strong in Albany, and I didn't do so brilliantly. See what you make of this. The plan had been to make two flights, a line of sight flight followed by an FPV flight. But the line of sight flight went so well that I decided to press on and go straight behind the screen for FPV. So I went into hoverlock at the end of what had been leg four of the line of sight flight, pirouetted round onto what was to be leg one FPV. And everything's looking pretty good. The height's excellent, the position's good. I apply a little forward cyclic but I'm not going forward very fast. Aha, that nose wind, hmm. Going backwards here. So, it's going to take a bit more determination, a bit more forward cyclic. So now at last, going forward. 
The lion is excellent, the height is excellent. Approaching the jungle gym, let's go into hoverlock now. A little bit of right roll, that's all right. Slips backwards a bit, loses a bit of height, that's all right. It's regathering the height. And I'm pirouetting round onto leg two, which is towards a tree which is slightly left of centre in this shot. I've forgotten about the tailwind. And now I am covering the ground with quite unaccustomed speed. And hoverlock now, I think. Oh, I left that a bit late. Oh, that was close. Pirouetting round, forgetting that I've still got a crosswind now and I'm sliding sideways into that tree. And now I'm losing a lot of height and I'm nearly on the ground. I, did I? I'm not quite sure whether I did hit the ground or not. Well, we pull the plug on it at the halfway point because after coming so close to clobbering the tree and almost falling into the park, I had added on too much power and I no longer had a hover hold lock on altitude. So the demonstration was an end there. I went back to the house and I looked very closely at the videos, saw all the mistakes I'd made and decided to have another go. So here I am back at another part. I've done it again. I've gone into hover lock at two metres instead of four. Four would have been so much better. Now in a moment, the base station is on the far right hand side of the screen. In a moment you'll see a little orange shirt on the very extreme right of frame creeping into the base station. So now turning on to my course for destination one. And at this very low altitude, it's quite hard to see. It was clearer, curiously. This is the Mobius camera, which is very much better than the FPV camera. But still, I saw destination one very clearly in the FPV screen. And making a fairly orthodox approach to destination one, despite the fact that the wind is coming across and towards us from the right. Okay, there's Hoverlock on at destination one and turning for destination two. And here I ran into a bit more trouble with the wind. The moment that I turned round onto destination two and released the Hoverlock, the aircraft started to slide away to the left. See it going all the way to the left and I'm adjusting the yaw so that the destination remains in view but I'm still being swept away from it. It needed a much earlier application of a, a roll control to correct that. Now I'm just having a little pause here wondering what to do. Hover lock on. And I've decided to go back and reapproach position two. These are the little games you can play with hover lock. So here I am about three quarter way between one and two going into hoverlock again and about to pirouette round and there you see destination two as it should have appeared if I'd made the approach correctly but still I'm drifting left and a little yaw and a little roll has fixed that but now I'm drifting left again. Hoverlock on and let's make a, a run for destination three. Destination 3 has a much bigger white marker, it's much easier to see, even from 2 metres. There it is. I love it. Very comforting. Zooming in on Destination 3, and the wind's taking me off to the right, as you would expect. I suppose I'm about 2 metres off. Well, that's not bad. Hoverlock on. And round we go to face destination four. Now this is where I get caught out a little. It's lost a fair bit of height in that particular hoverlock. And as I go to move forward, there's destination three on a hard left. We're about to cross over the top of a reticulation water spigot. But in the meantime, I've bounced it. No damage done. But I've added power and that's raised my lock altitude. I'm now at a locked altitude of four meters and see how much easier the world is to manage from four meters. I can clearly see 
takeoff destination and destination one from this position. And that's the end of the mission. Lots learnt. And that's a little bit closer to what you want to be doing. But the important lesson to be learned is not at two metres, four metres is the height to go for. <laughs> I can imagine you're thinking to yourself, hell, this is a dreadfully shallow end. <laughs> the deep end it seems like a hell of a long way off. Of course. But I am making progress. You're looking at two successive flights and very considerable progress has been made and I promise you the next outing will be even better. I'll go on doing hoverlock cruising until I get totally on top of the wind conditions, until I get totally on top of adjusting your and roll to achieve a straight path to a nominated destination. Only then will I decide to go into hoverlock cruise and hold it through multiple destinations. So let's say I will go from one to two without having a hoverlock pause. I think you'll find you very quickly get to the point where you can make a complete circuit without once resorting to going into full hoverlock. Just using the altitude control to help you. Now, once you've got to the point where you can do a complete circuit without going to a complete hoverlock, you are probably right to try it without the altitude control and go into what is then free rain cruising. Now that's going to be a big moment and I, my recommendation would be that you approach it from five meters. You, you go to five meters and go into hoverlock, then step behind your screen and switch off the hoverlock and fly the course at five meters without the hoverlock. If anything goes wrong, you can instantly flick the switch and you will be rescued. And if it really goes pear-shaped, then return to home will work well for you. Did you notice that my launch point was a goodish distance away from the base station and the trees? Because that's where return to home is going to take you. A little bit of safety. So there, I think I've shown it all to you. And here is the trusty beast, and it's slightly different from the incarnations you've seen previously. There is a second camera underneath it. This is the Mobius. It produces a more attractive picture for viewing on screens than the FPV camera. I think the problem with the FPV camera is not so much the camera as the portable recorder which is on top of the base station and which records the pictures. Now, you might wonder why I have gone for such a very temporary installation of the FPV gear. And the answer is very simple. In the long term, when I get to be doing FPV in the deep end, free rain, I'm then going to remove all the innards from my trusty Walkira and I'm going to put them onto a 450mm frame. The little bit of extra width in a frame gives a little bit of extra stability, which I very much like. It also gives you better opportunities for mounting the camera and the transmitter and maybe an OSD system which I really like, in mounting them in such a way that drag is minimised. This is just too bulky. It's getting too deep this way. It doesn't need to be much thicker than a sa the sandwich. A pancake shape would be so much. This thickness here is about as thick as any FPV quad needs to be. But whammo, we've got all of this. Well, some of it is there for a very good reason. And this is the sensor for the GPS, and I must say it's tremendously effective, but it's not really relative to its height above all the rest of the gear. So that's my plans. And there you're seeing the end of me as the man who demos for Walkira. I love it. I've got so many quads hanging around the house. You can see a few of them here, but there's dozens more tucked away in secure corners. And they're all pretty good. Some of them are really excellent, but there's none which I could really promise you was better than this.